I was born and raised a traditional American sports fan. I loved football, both collegiate and professional. I'd spend my days watching baseball and I played seriously for years. I went crazy during the NCAA basketball tournament. I went to hockey games in my hometown. But as my sports fandom grew, I began to learn about sports that I had never watched seriously or even heard of. Of the course, over the course of years, I went from a typical American sports fan to what I would call a world sports fan. And with every sport on the face of the planet on pause for now, it's a great time for us to learn about some of the sports we wouldn't even consider watching under normal circumstances. In this weekly mini-series, I'll be taking you through my perspective on sports that I never considered I'd ever be a fan of. This is an outsider's perspective. We'll begin today with the sport that kicked off my love of sports from around the world. It goes by many names. Football, the world's game, the beautiful game. But in the U.S., we just call it soccer. It happens to be the first professional team sport that's returning to action as the German League resumes on May 18th. And it's remained a niche sport in the States for our entire history. The moment you watch a match, you can actually see why. It's so much different than anything we see in America from a cultural perspective and from a sporting perspective. During the course of this video, I'm not gonna tell you you're an ignorant person if you don't watch soccer or that you're closed-minded. I'm just gonna explain the game from the perspective of someone who didn't grow up watching it, but came to love it. And maybe you will too. So let's begin with the main critique about soccer. It's boring. I mean, that's exactly what you hear when people discuss the sport, right? And I can kind of see it. I mean, there's very little scoring. It's not uncommon to see a match with no scoring, though that's certainly not the norm. A lot of the game revolves around play away from either goal, and so of course our natural inclination is, why should I care? They're not even close to scoring. This is exactly what I thought as well. Growing up, I never had fun watching soccer because I didn't really get what was going on. They were just kicking a ball back and forth, and they rarely scored, so what's the point of all this? On top of that, they just kind of do some weird things. They flop, okay, let's just let's get that out of the way. Yes, diving is far more common in soccer than any other sport, and I'll get to that. But as Americans, we rarely see that in our sports, and so it's natural for us to scoff at it when we see it here. A lot of the way the players interact seems weird to our eyes. In addition to all of that, if you're not watching closely and you see a wide shot of the field during a game, what do you see? Probably more than a few guys either standing in place or walking around. The clock counts upward, but there's time randomly added to the end of it. So much of the game seems to be at the referee's discretion, and there's no overtime. Look, I understand all of this. This isn't me trying to assume what you're thinking. This is literally what I thought for half of my life before I began to watch the sport. But I had several friends who were lifelong fans who helped explain the game to me. I got a different perspective. So now, I will be that friend to you. You all seem like nice people, I'm sure. So I just want to give you a different perspective on this to maybe help you see the sport in a different way. And if you still don't like it, fine. But we all have the opportunity to experience some new things as every sport resumes at different times. So let's talk about why soccer is entertaining. A lot of this has to do with changing your focus. If you're fixated on the scoring and only the scoring, then soccer becomes quite boring because, frankly, there isn't very much of that. But the true entertainment in soccer is actually how the teams get to the point where they can score rather than just the scoring itself. Soccer is a tactical game. The excitement is in the buildup. Let me give you an example. Here is Croatia's first goal in the 2018 World Cup final. This starts from, from a free kick, a, a dead ball situation. Now on first watch, this is a mass of guys running towards the goal. The ball bounces around until, it finally, until finally some guy kicks it in. But if you change your perspective, you start to see the tactics behind it. Look here, at the top of the screen, one of Croatia's players comes flying from behind the ball. That was the man who was always supposed to receive this pass. Now, he's in a position where he's behind the defense and someone has to go cover him or mark him as it's known. Just like a double team in basketball, what happens when the same number of defenders suddenly have to guard one extra person? Someone is open. 
This man knows it, of course, so his first thought is to head the ball back into the center of action where there's now one fewer defender. Now, you see how this man at the top of the box has no one near him? That's by design. Croatia's plan the whole time is to get the ball back to him. It takes a great pass to get the ball back, and once it gets there, he still has to make a split-second decision. Because in soccer, guys are so fast and there's nothing inhibiting their movement, there is remarkably less time to make a decision than you think there is. But here, Ivan Perisic takes this beautiful touch around the incoming defender and finishes with a gorgeous shot from 18 yards away. So much of this is about perspective. Again, 18 yards is basically the entire red zone in a football game. That's over half a basketball court. Imagine kicking a ball with that level of accuracy and speed while it's bouncing and avoiding the outstretched arm of a man who is six foot two, the height of that goalkeeper. And while to you this probably looks random, you can see by the way all the players move that this had been the plan the entire time. And that's just one goal from one game. What you have to understand is soccer is as tactical, if not more tactical, than any sport in the world. There is no time to stop, no time to get a play from your coach. Every player has to make every decision on the spot, and they have, to and they have a complete 360 degree range of freedom in order to do it. What got me into the game was appreciating how skilled these players are and how smart they are. You don't get a sense of that until it's explained to you, but trust me, the amount of physical and mental training necessary to operate on this level is truly astonishing. So when you reframe your thinking about how it's boring and understand it's not about the scoring, but the constant game of chess between both teams uh, to, to get you to that point, suddenly you start to see far more action. And this rabbit hole is basically endless. You start to formulate your own opinions about how many center backs you need, whether you need full backs on defense, which midfield positions are best, whether you prefer a false nine or a true number 10. I'm sure all of that sounds like nonsense right now, but the more you watch, the more you learn about the deeper levels of tactics in the game. Soccer truly is a smart game. There are so many layers to it. And if you're a nerd like me, that's why you love sports in the first place. And so with that in mind, all of the other weird quirks about soccer start to make sense. Where before you saw players standing or walking around, now you understand that they're playing 90 minutes straight with no substitutions. You only get three in a match for your 11 players, and you don't get extra if someone gets injured. So odds are, if you're out there to begin with, you're staying out there for 90 straight minutes with just half time in between. So you need to save energy when you can for when you need to make a full field sprinting run in the 90th minute of the game. And now we've gotten to flop. Look, if you're a soccer fan, this one drives you up a wall. Because this is what we hear about every time from people who don't watch. Oh, those guys are soft. Look at them flopping all over the place. Now, granted, diving does exist in soccer more so than any other sport. We'll acknowledge this. But remember when I said the odds are if you're on a soccer field, you're staying there for 90 minutes? Well, think about the last time you rolled your ankle. Nothing serious. You didn't have to go to the doctor or anything. But you probably had to sit down for a few minutes, stretch it out, or walk it off, right? Well, in soccer, your team might have conceded twice by that time because they're not allowed to replace you. So suddenly, that little nick, which in basketball or football, you'd come off the field for a minute to get taped up, is now a huge deal because there's no way they can replace you. So sometimes injuries that don't look so serious to us are still serious enough for players to warrant medical attention because of the ramifications of the substitution rules. But that's not to say there isn't real diving. There is, and sometimes it's blatantly obvious. Now, to some extent, this is cultural. It's more accepted and treated as a tactical maneuver rather than a fake injury, if that makes any sense. But for us as Americans, we kind of just have to get over it. It's foreign to us. It doesn't make much sense, and we don't see it in our sports as much. But that's just one of those cultural differences that we have to ignore. Soccer fans hate that stuff too, mind you. There's constant discussion about players who dive, and there are actually repercussions if you're caught doing it by the referee. So yes, they dive. It happens. But these guys are still tough. Look at the average distance run by a player during a soccer match. It's about seven miles a game, sometimes a lot more depending on position. And that's not seven miles at an 11-minute mile, 11 mile pace. That's sprinting, then jogging, then sprinting again, then standing for a couple seconds to catch your breath, and sprinting again. That is a hard seven miles. There's a lot of contact, lots of spiked cleats sliding towards your ankle while you're moving at full speed. 
There are some tough bastards that play the game of soccer. And once we see that, the diving problem becomes a nuisance, not a catastrophe. So with soccer resuming in less than a week at the time of recording, now would be a great time to see if your perspective hasn't changed a little. For me, I played a ton of FIFA before I even watched a match seriously. FIFA is great to learn. You pick up a lot of the terminology, you learn a ton about the players and teams. It's a great gateway into watching the sport. And there's no shortage of soccer to watch. There are leagues all over the world, plus the Champions League, which features all the best teams from Europe, plus the big international competitions. Check NBC, check Fox, where the German league is that I mentioned, check ESPN. They all have soccer going on. It's worth checking out. You might find you have a heightened appreciation for the very aptly named beautiful game. And come hang out with us on Twitch if you want to learn more. Starting Thursday, May 14th, I'll be streaming Football Manager, the ultimate nerdy soccer game, and we can all have a good time together. Check the link in the description. Subscribe for more GA Sports. Thank you so much. We appreciate you.